That's a grass, buddy. Well, you like that better than pellets, don't you? I will on your snow back. Good morning, sunshine. Look at that. Uh -huh. Hey, knock it off. Daisy, go over there. Go. I don't know what to think about these rabbits. Hello, Americans. Another friend subscribed around the world. How can you man? Hello, girls. Ooh, you guys ate all them pellets. I'm going to have to go get some. I do like them. Randy, you don't like them so much. Need some more water in there. Well, this morning, man, just out taking care of critters, went and took care of the chicks, and, uh, got to, I've got the, uh, got to get the roof on, but I've got the chicken house all framed up, got the front on it, got to, uh, I ended up putting, uh, I think I talked about it, which I learned way back, man, me and my brother, my good brother, um, I think I did, oh. years ago, man, I was probably uh, 15, and we started, we both went in house, bought us both, and we started a chicken, chicken and egg business. I actually kind of forgot about that and uh, kind of came back to me when I was doing the chicken pen. Because we went in halves. So I can't remember what we both. It wasn't a ton of money, man, but maybe close to 100 bucks. A, hey, Daisy, stop. Maybe close to 100 bucks a piece. And bought the lump, bought the chicks, and bought the. Uh, that's what I lived in. Because I moved over and lived with my father against my better judgment. But I did get to be around my, you know, the, my brother and sister for uh, a couple years anyway. But anyway, so uh, this was on the Rogue River on a ranch on the Rogue River in southern Oregon. And But we went in halves and started this chicken business. It's an egg business. Um, and I was 15. We went in house, man, about the stuff. But anyway, what reminded me of it's because this chicken pen, which I did that after the fox had got a few uh, of the hens or a few of our layers here, you know, ended up putting chicken wire on the bottom. But this one I framed up, you know, just framed the floor up, man, flipped it up and put chicken wire all on the floor. And that's we did that, man. And the chicken house we built, then we bought all the lumber, all reclaimed. It was all reclaimed stuff. And the funny thing was is the guy that we bought the lumber for to build the chicken house bought every dozen of eggs we ever produced for a good amount of time man he uh when we told him what we were building he's all you bring those eggs i'll buy every every egg you produce so that turned out pretty good for us for a couple years all right so i got them uh i need to go get some more pellets i think i need to get a bigger, bigger thing. get some more pellets and then uh Hello, we're gonna go. It's raining today. Um, Katie and Tim went out. Oh, day before yesterday, I think, and ended up finding thirty-something morels in a different area. I would have liked to went out today, but the rain, so we may end up going out tomorrow, tomorrow, the next day. We'll be going out this week a few times. In between, man, we're supposed to get some rain tomorrow. It's supposed to be like mid to high seventies or something. So tomorrow should be pretty good for mushroom hunting. This battery's going dead too, but the thing I'm going to talk about today, I don't know if I'm going to sit in the cook shack or somewhere, I'm going to sit down and I've jotted a thing, a few things down so I talk about everything that I wanted to talk about, but uh, but, you know, we live the old way. We live, I live like my great grandparents, you know, or try to, you know, obviously videos and the internet and stuff like that that we have, um, Dude, they can turn off the power in a flash, man, and 
I'm set up to survive that, you know. Everybody's always told me I was born 200 years too late. But I want to talk about it because all of y'all, everybody, um, needs to get back to the old ways. We're going to talk about that. All right, man, came in here, been out doing chores and stuff, and now I'm sitting by the wood stove in here. But I wanted to go over some, uh, jotted a few things down, keep me on course. I don't have a squirrel moment, you know. <laughs> but, uh, um, wanted to go over, man, going back to the old ways. Y'all need to, everybody, man, the, um, the whole world, man, which there's a lot of places in the world that they still live, you know, like you did a hundred years ago. But, so we're going to touch on a few things that I've jotted down. Um, been reading some stuff and hearing some stuff and listening to some stuff and all that. And, you know, I've been preaching it to you for, man, I don't know how long, a long time now, man, that, uh, you know, start to stock up and grow your food and store water and all that. And actually, I didn't end up doing it, but I was going to make a list of things, you know, power outage, man, power outage and grid, you know, grid down, whatever you want to call it, uh, um, cyber attacks, that kind of stuff, we'll talk a little bit about that too, but, um, let's start off with, uh, power outage, S you know, say the power goes out, man, whether it be for a few hours, or a few weeks, or a few days, a few months, a few years, you know, I mean, there's some things going on that concern me that could knock us, uh, you know, back to the old days real quick that could uh, last for a long time. And then it's going to affect, um, which we'll kind of get into that, but, um, you know, all these fancy new cars, excuse me, all the fancy new cars and all that stuff, um, the chips, all that, it could knock all that out to where your fancy Lexus sitting out there in the driveway don't run. You know, dude, shit. There's a lot of crazy. It's just one thing after another, man. And I get tired of, uh, or don't get tired of it, but, you know, talk about it, dude. I feel, you know, I feel like giving myself that dumb stare. You know, what's this guy? Some crazy, uh, crazy freaking conspiracy theory guy. The thing is, it's all coming true. Anyway, man, what to do? What do you do? Um,. If the power goes out, man, you've got a freezer or a fridge, you know, your refrigerator, whatever. You, if you have a generator, you know, you can run your generator depending on how, what the temps are outside and all that. You know, you can fire up your generator. I got four generators. Not all of them run, but I got, you know, I'd, if that happened, I'd definitely be uh, working on other two or three. They just haven't, I picked them up, you know, uh, junk sales or whatever here and there and of course, you always get that. Oh, it was running when I, you know, last time I had it out, it was running. <laughs> Whether it was or not, who knows? You pick it up cheap enough, I pick them up, and you can always take the parts out of there and figure out other ways to generate power. You know, the inside parts, man, with the crick, I could figure out something. You know, wind, you know, whatever. You can always figure out, you know, something. Um, but the first, man, so the power goes out, man. You've got a freezer full of food, man, meat. Um, the first thing that we would do on the creek bottom, especially if it, you know, this is, I'm talking extended period of time, man, not just a few hours. I'm talking, you know, days, weeks, months. And the first thing I would do is I would start pulling out the stuff and I would start, uh, um, smoking it, dude. I would start smoking it. What I'd write it, I'd try to do it. Well, yeah, I'll get back to that. Um, I'd start smoking it, jerking it, making jerky out of it, drying it. Um, salting it, and that's something you should have in your uh, supply thing is a lot of salt, man, is cases of salt. The salt in a crazy, you know, back in the back in the days, um, salt's like, you know, like gold, man. You know, if you ain't got no salt, you know, these are the little things that you use daily that you don't even think about, man. But salt, man, you can salt your, you know, your pork, your meat, your, uh, you know, salt it and cure it and preserve it. You know, that's it's definitely salty when you eat it, but man, it's, you know, you can cure it. If you've never had salted pork, man, salt, salted pork is good, especially done the old way. Mmm, it's good stuff. And jerking it and smoking it and all that. Um, I was going to get back to the generator thing. The one thing, depending on your temps, 
you know, the man here, uh, tomorrow, like I said, it's supposed to be, I don't you know, like 78 or something tomorrow, um, today it's, uh, I don't know what it is outside, man, I would guess in the 40s right now, so say the power went out today, because it could happen any flipping time, say the power went out today, I wouldn't be all that concerned about, well, I'd try to start smoking it and jerking it and, um, curing it, drying it, dehydrating it, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'd have a generator out there, and today I would say that you start that generate generator up, and you don't want to be opening your open and closing your freezer, whether it be a stand-up or you know, a chest freezer. You don't want to open only open it if you have to. You know, and then run your generator, man, for say an hour or so, man, keep it froze, man. You know, obviously you're gonna have to open it to check to make sure how it's doing. But you don't want to be open and close it in and out, in and out. Same with your refrigerator, man. Freaking get in there, get what you need to close it fast, you know, really fast. Um, so I have that down, don't let the cold out. And depending on the temps, you know, man, down there in Texas or whatever, dude, man, I don't know. Obviously, you want to keep your, and you should keep your uh, um, freezer in, you know, your pantry off the thing or your, you know, out in your garage, your shop or something like that where it's, you know, in a cooler place, not in your in your cabin or your house. Um, but down in Texas, where they're getting in other places, man, that I've seen on videos, man, it's getting hundred degrees, ninety and hundred degrees right now, man. That you're probably gonna have to every couple hours fire up your generator every two or three hours, depending on how good your freezer is to and how big it is. You know, I've got a, uh, you know, I think my freezer's seven foot. You know, I got a, one of the big. Freezer, man, I can fit three bodies in that baby. <laughs> but, uh, so, um, yeah, that's one way to do it is, you know, is the generator or whatever, man. If you got solar power, that'd be great, too. That's something we want to get that we've talked about forever that we haven't done yet. Um, and then dehydrating and drying. See, that's one thing down there in, say, Texas. I like Texas. Um, down in Texas or, you know, especially the drier climates and the hot climates and stuff is, you know, whether you put it over a fire and smoke it, you know, or whatever, or you just put it out and string up, you know, different, damn fish, fish, I used to know this gal, uh, what was her name, Bud, and, uh, oh, she's the one that taught, it was a Mexican gal, oh, man, we're talking 30 years ago at the flea markets, and she taught Kitty how to make, uh, Salsa, she's a, a Mexican gal. She, I just loved her. Um, dang it, dude. I hate when names go. Damn, if Kitty was here, she'd tell you in a flash. Oh, that drives me nuts. <laughs> um, anyway, man, she used to go, you know, because we were set up at, uh, this was back in the motorhome days, set up at the, um, at the flea market there, and, you know, we'd sell on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then we'd leave our stuff set up, and we'd all go hit the lakes and fish, man. We'd fish together and spend time together and stuff. And uh, she'd go, man, they'd catch their fish, you know. We'd catch our fish or whatever, you know. And I'd cook them up in a frying pan or on the stove or whatever. And she had those dehydrators. We've got a couple of them, man, the solar dehydrators. All it is is a net basket with the shelves in it, you know, that you can zip up and close. And she'd dry all her fish, man, trout and perch. She'd flay them out and she'd just dry all that, you know, all that fish. And then do whatever, you know, fish tacos or whatever she she made out of it. Dude, it's driving me nuts, I can't think. Ro Rosemary, Rose. Pretty sure her name was Rose. Rose. Bud and Rose, yeah. She was, oh, she was so amazing, man. Then Bud passed away and she ended up moving back to Mexico. So many people come into your lives and go, man, that you just love so much. Um... Here I got off squirrel. I wrote this down so I wouldn't do that, man. <laughs> so, uh, dehydrate, uh, stay back, stay back. I wasn't getting y'all excited. Um, dude, I really feel and have been hearing and, like I said, reading a lot that, uh, you know, the grid down, the power outages, the cyber attack, it's coming, man. And it's something I keep hearing a lot about is, uh, this just ain't doing me no good. Um, something I've been hearing a lot about is the Iranian, um, oh, dude, the EMP. 
you know, the EMP attack, which go, 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 you're gonna knock my thing. Crazy, crazy dog. But the EMP attack, and from what I've heard and gathered, and I've been hearing this man for probably about know, a week or two weeks, you know, reading a little bit, man, it just really gives you a jolt. Is because, dude, Iran, man, Iran and Iraq, the Iranians, Iraqians, and all that, dude, anybody that will strap a bomb, which, man, I've watched and read some stuff, man, that those people are forced to do that, but freaking anybody that will strap a bomb, suicide bomber, to themselves and blow themselves up, um, I'm pretty sure you don't want them to have nuclear weapons. Well, as it turns out, it's looking like they have some. Um, shorter range ones, and they're, dude, I don't know anything about all the, you know, uh, you know, magnetic stuff and all the stuff in the sky, but they could, sh supposedly, and this could be happening right now, they could be in process, this is something they've talked about for years, all the way back to Obama, and, uh, they, they put it up in the, um, you know, up in a certain height or what, dude, I don't know about all this, this is just the stuff I read, and of course all the technical words they throw in and shit, I'm just, <laughs> but, uh, they can detonate this thing at a certain level, and, dude, it will wipe us off, man, it will send us into the old days like that, man, we will lose all our computers, all our power, our power grid is so fragile, it's just scary, man, and that's, this could be, you know, and I ain't trying to freak everybody out, you know, and I ain't trying, I ain't the crazy conspiracy guy that some people claim I am. You know, that's facts, man. It's all facts. And they've got the, they've got the capability of doing that. And from what I've heard, and you don't hear much about it, dude. You really got to get on the, you know, the old freaking uh, internet and really freaking hunt it down. But, man, you can look it up and see what you find out about it. Man, that's the Iranian EMP. But if that happens, uh, and it could be, I mean, like I said, it could be in the process right now. So if it does, man, see you. Actually, you won't ever freaking probably see us a long time from now. I don't think YouTube's going to survive it. So that was one of the, uh, um, this ain't doing me no good. The, uh, that one, that was, you know, pretty freaky. And then, of course, you got Russia and Ukraine and, um, Dude, the best way, you know, nuke it all of us is going to just wipe us all out, you know. Other than the people that might have the bunkers and stuff set up like that. Who knows? Depending on where it hits, what it does, uh, all that. You don't want to die from radiation, man. That's, uh, what a horrible, flipping, miserable way to go. But, uh, so you got that. <laughs> There's so much going on that it's just hard to even keep, uh, keep track on all this stuff. And then they throw in the, like I said, I've been reading it. I hadn't said anything about it yet because I'd only been catching little tiny bits and there ain't. And that even worries me more when I'm not hearing about it more. It worries me even more. You know, and then on top of that with the food shortages and all that. Jiminy Christmas, dude. If you don't think crap's going on, there's something wrong with you, man. All right, so let's go over a few things that uh, that you should have on hand. You know, supplies stocked up all the time, man. Even, you know, even when this crap wasn't going on, this is stuff that I just have all the time. But, uh, number, well, number one would be water, obviously. You've got to have a supply of water in your food. Oh, man, jugs. Dude, I fill up every jug and store. And, you know, and I got, a, I, you know, I got two wells on this place, but I still, um, any bottles, man, freaking, even the, I even started, we usually don't, but even the milk jugs, I'm rinsing out and filling them up with, you know, water for my animals and stuff like that. And I've got a crick and two wells and all that, but they better be, better, better to have it, not need it, than to need it, not have it. So, so water and all that, but the next thing would be, uh, candles. Excuse me. Candles are a must. And I can't, oh, right here. I'll just pick these up. I've got boxes and boxes, but I just picked these up, man. I think I paid $1.99 at a junk shop for these cases of, you know, candles, man. And these ones are, every one of these, dude, these came from China, but every one of these, and these are vanilla ones, so they smell good, too. But, uh, every one of these is in a bubble wrap, but I got ended up picking up two cases of these for two bucks a piece. 
And then I've got, I have boxes. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Oh, that's cool. I'll show Kitty that. There's even on the ends of it, there's uh, some of the bigger ones. So you got, in this case, you've got two levels. I got some round ones. This is like a variety. I didn't even know that. This is the first time I really looked at them. And you got some round ones. And then I got another level of them underneath that with four, oh no, two big ones there. And one really big one. Dude, <laughs> for two bucks, man. That's a heck of a freaking uh, deal, you know. I wish they had cases and cases. I'd have bought every case they had. So that was a junk deal. You know, obviously can't run out and get that. I don't know if you can order these or not. Well, I'm trying to run up. So that candles, so that's one thing, man, definitely get uh, get your supply of candles, and then, uh, you know, everybody, you got, you know, your propane, obviously keep, I actually got to go fill, I got three tanks to fill today, but if we go in for the long haul, propane is just for a while, man, you know, propane is nice, dude, that's how I heat my water heater, I do have an old, I'd have to hook it up on my fireplace, but I do have a, um, it goes on your pipe, lets the smoke go through, you know, and it's already done, and it's old school, man, like turn of the century, and it's got the old copper pipes in it and stuff, so I can actually heat water there, and then make a tank, you know, and stuff like that, so I would heat off of my wood stoves, some of you ain't, you know, some of you don't have, well, probably the majority of you don't have wood stoves and stuff like that, um, if there's any way that you can have a wood stove or put a wood stove wherever you're at, I'd definitely do that, that is a must. Um, so the oil lamps, then you got oil lamps and fuel, the fuel for oil lamps has gone way up to, you know, the kerosene or the, um, lamp oil, uh, definitely something that you want to stock up as much, I have a few bottles, I have a ton of hurricane lamps, I bought a couple of cases of them, some small ones too, one time, I've got cases of them out, out here somewhere, and then we got oil lamps and hurricane lamps in here, and then in the cabin, and in the office, you know, all filled with the oil and stuff like that. But that's another, which I mean, you can you can make different, you know. Lamps is a good one. Lamps and oil, if you, if, you know, like I said, man, it depends if you're in for the long haul or whatever. But you got to have, the oil lamp ain't going to do you no, no good if you only have what's in that, you know. Because that's, if you burn that for an extended amount of time, they burn through some oil pretty good, so... Same with candles. You're going to run out of candles, but I know candle makers, so that problem, that part I don't have no problem with, man, because I can barter or trade or buy or whatever more candles as we go along. Something else you need to have is a way to cook. Yes, you can have your Coleman lantern or your Coleman stove. Um, you can have your little freaking propane stove, you know, with your little green bottles. You better have a crap load of those um, stocked up. I have one of those deals that you can hook it, you know, hook your five gallon and you can refill those. But like I said, propane, it depends. If it was, dude, if, if Iran hits us with that, dude, it's the long haul in our lifetimes. Then, you know, who knows how long it would take to re, if ever, if we made it back from that. You know, that's, uh, that's huge, man. It's, uh, if you look into it, it'll freak you out a little bit. But, so you want to have a way to cook. Um, I know a lot of you in apartments and stuff like that, that if you have any kind of a yard, you know, any kind of, a, um, old hibachi or a, um, charcoal type grill, dude, you could come up with, you know, twigs or, you know, even in the cities, man, going around, you know, trees and twigs and anything, if you have a little hibachi, man, to sit out there and cook you something to eat, you know, that's... You know, you should have some kind of wood burning, charcoal burning um, stove, but you don't have to use charcoal on those. You can use, you know, like my new K, you know, my big one that's actually made to use wood, which we're actually going to be using that day. We were down yesterday, and <laughs> this is off subject, squirrel. Um, yesterday, I did not know what was going on, and we were down there because there was a big junk shop, and I'm actually going to show some other stuff. On my other channel about that later, but uh, stay, try to stay on subject here. We're down there, um, went into Ridley's. We only had a few things we needed to pick up, 
but we always check the meat, you know, to see with meat. Man, and dude, I never thought in these times with the craziness that's going on that we would ever see it again. But they had pork roast, bone-in pork roast, 97 cents a pound. And, you know, in these packs or whatever, so I ended up buying eight of them. And, uh, dude, that's a smoking deal, man. So that's something you want to do. You know, I don't know how your area is or something, man. Always, anytime you go into any store that has meat, check their meat prices, man, just to... You might catch it. That was a one-day sale yesterday, and we had no idea it was even going on and just happened to be in there. So, obviously, ended up, um, Car and Rain was with us and stuff, so we all ended up picking up some pork. I think the pork chops they had in there, I think pork chops were a dollar nine or a dollar nineteen or something like that a pound. So, we ended up getting a couple packs of pork chops, too, man. So, you want to stock up on all that. All right now, back to, um... What was I talking about? Let's see if this is. I already talked about all that crap. Um, and then the other thing, man, not only cooking, you know, like a hibachi and stuff like that, is, you know, you don't think about it right now because we're going into um, spring and summertime. But if this hits or anything like that, uh, you know, or man, the, what, the way the weather's going right now, who knows, man? Four days ago, we had snow. You know, today it's chilly out there, it's wet, but if this, if they hit us with it, it's a, you know, considerable amount of time, you know, man, we could go through the summer and all that, first you can be all hot, you know, there's definitely ways to survive, there we lived many, many, or humans lived many, 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 many years without air conditioning, so man, you can, uh, just figure out different ways to keep yourself cool, um, Mine's head down to the creek, man. Get, head down to the creek, sit in the creek, do whatever if you can't use your air conditioning. You know, I got, um, you know, I'm a swamp cooler guy. I love my swamp coolers. I rebuild swamp coolers and I have four of them. So I like my swamp coolers, which, you know, I mean, if I was doing, depends on what I was doing, man, I could even run a generator, run a swamp cooler. It doesn't take a lot of power to run a swamp cooler. But my main thing is a uh, source of heat. The heat is the something that you need. You know, you can you can make it without air conditioning or whatever, but you'll freeze to death, man. You've got to have some source of heat. Um, you know, if you're in an apartment, you're in the city, you're whatever and can't, you ain't got a wood stove. Uh, you've got to figure out a way to heat yourself, man. Without you got to figure out a source of heat without. Um, propane dude the propane i mean if extended amount of time propane heaters are great man i have a propane heater in here i have a pro i have a propane heater in every building on this well other than the, the outbuildings but in my main buildings i have propane heaters you know wall mount propane heaters in all of these that we use man it helps take that chill off or whatever but if it's extended amount of time dude, you're not going to be able to get propane so you're going to have to be able to heat yourself so, man, in the city, man, in the cities and all, dude, it's going to, it, stuff happens, man, it is going to be, I feel bad for any of y'all out in the city, you know, and even the, the, you know, so many of the city folks think that the country folks got just loads of food and, you know, got everything you need out here and stuff, but they start coming to the mountains and all that, it's going to be, it ain't gonna be pretty, man, dude. I'll tell you that right now, man. I know, I know the people my family, man. You don't want to invade these freaking hills. So, but man, you've got to have a source of heat. <coughs> I should have actually gave more thought on stuff you can use. You know, uh, one thing is which you'd have to use candles or some kind of uh, oil burner or a propane burner. Um, but is the Arizona special that I've showed in my other ones, you know, taking a flower pot, a clay, a clay flower pot that's got the hole in it and turn it upside down and put that on a burner of some kind and make sure you got ventilation, but turn that up and that turns that into basically a ceramic heater. So that's, you've just got to have the source. You know, I have many, did I have every kind of, uh, every kind of stove and camping stove and survival stove. I think I have at least one of just about everything there is, you know, all the way down to the little military ones with the, I can't think what the heck it's called right now, but that, 
Um, those little blocks, those little white blocks you light on fire. Uh, anyway, man, I've got those. You know, I mean, you could even use that for. It's just a short, you know, cook. You can cook on it, and you could heat up a, a flower pot for a little bit. But, man, I, I would say, in trouble times, I would pick me up a small, if possible, pick you up a small wood stove. Because if the world goes to crap like that, even if you're in an apartment, man, stuff a freaking pipe through the window. Who cares? You know, just make sure you're up on some rocks or bricks or something, man. Dude, I would do whatever it takes. Because that's what it's going to take, man. It's going to take old way of thinking and going back to the old ways to survive. And... You know, down there in the flatlands and the cities and the, especially the big cities and all that. Um, man, so many humans and congregated in one place. It's, there's bad times coming, man. Anyway, I tried to freak y'all out on here. I just wanted to go over a few of those things. I had so much more on my mind and I didn't get it all out there. But I hadn't done a video for a couple days and got a lot of... A lot of crap going on, and like I said, man, trying to get in between, trying to get everything going around here. Oh, and I did say on my other, because we went down yesterday, down to Weezer, and there was a street cell on the one end. That's one of the main reasons we went down, and scored a couple things there, man. The prices, you know, it was more like antique store prices, So, but I did score a few things there, and then... Uh, where the heck else did we go, man? A couple of yard sales. And ended up doing, ended up scoring enough stuff that um, it paid for my trip down there. And it paid for everything that I bought. Plus a little jingle in my jangle, so it was good. But I think I'll show on my other channel. Because I did, you know, if you've been with me, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. But I had the other channel, Mountain Junkers. And if you've been with me for a while, you knew I started that channel. I was... I don't even know what got me on there, and I'm looking through it and stuff. And, dude, I hadn't put a video on there in over a year. So then to um, kind of open it instead of just concentrating on the, you know, just the junk in and stuff, is I changed the name of the channel to, I don't even know what I changed the name of the channel to. <laughs> I've only, I put two videos on there just announcing that I changed the uh, the name of it. Let's, let's, let's do a uh, refresh it is called, well, that's right, Woodsman, Trader, and Survival. So on that channel, man, I'm going to concentrate on, obviously, the resale, the junking, the thrift storing, um, the survival things, man, going out, you know, edible herbs, edible foods, wild edible foods, just different fishing, all that. But I'm going to start trying to put more time, at least once a week, get a video on there, and maybe more as we go along. But uh, I got that, you know, I got it there, and I haven't done anything with it, so I thought I'd liven it up a little bit, change the name, and go in a different direction with it. So go over and check that out. I'll actually put that link down below for that, to get back over to that channel. And then there's something else that just crossed my mind, and I can't think what the hell it was. <laughs> Dude, I was losing it, man. Yeah, there was something else that I was going to... I'm telling you, I got so much stuff going through my head. Plus, my mind's out there. That I've heard the rain's... Uh, it's not raining right now, man. I've dried out. Actually, it's pretty dang warm in here because I've got the wood stove cooking. So, I need to get back out there and get some stuff. So, if I think about it, I'll try to... I need to start writing... Well, I tried to write it down, man. I don't even stay on... I don't even stay on script, dude. But, uh... Yeah, so check out that channel. Um, gosh, I wish I could remember. It was something along that lines. And that the other channel, obviously, I'll do some. You know, gonna go fishing here pretty soon. Like I said, mushroom hunting. Mushroom hunting's next, but I am you know take my fishing pole along. And then, oh, and the metal detected, all that stuff. I'll probably end up doing on that on that channel too. It's just kind of a outdoorsy, uh, you know, woodsman type of type of thing with the with the trader and the resale you know that's how oh that was actually what that was what it was i just did it man i got it dude <laughs> the uh you know the grid going down or the internet or any of the um all that crap going on you know with you too man with your jobs or however you make a living 
um, is going to affect, dude, it's going to affect everything. You know, as far as ours, dude, it's going to affect us because I may live, you know, as much as I can the old way and all that. But one of the things that has made us able to do that, you know, and I mean, it's funny because I pound out knives on a, you know, 1800s blacksmith or a forge, you know, and I got all, and I do all this, you know, I don't know if you want to call it primitive, but all this old way ways, you know, and to make a living and going through, and, you know, digging dumps and going through, excuse me, old barns and old cabins and all this kind of stuff. You know, and I get all this old stuff, and then I put it online to sell it. You know, Etsy, eBay, um, a couple other ones I can't even think of right now. So I sell my stuff. So if everything goes down and um, we have no internet, you know, you won't be seeing us. And you don't have, you know, any power or any of that. You're still going to have to, uh, which, I'll, you know, obviously I go right back to my roots with, Dude, I've been a barter trader my whole life, you know, man, since I was in grade school. Always trading. I love trading. If I could get through life trading without having to use greenbacks, I'd be doing it, man. Because everybody wants them dang greenbacks. Why? I don't know. Because it's just paper. They ain't worth crap. <laughs> but uh, anyway, what would we do? You know, we wouldn't be able to sell it. Well, dude, I'd go back to the way that I was always doing it. Whether I was trekking it down, you know, to wherever in a freaking pack or if you know rigs whatever but i'd be back out peddling my goods and trading stuff on the side of the road or wherever man we'd uh we'd just adapt like we always have man we kind of adapted to the you know the the online stuff is where it's at right now for now but that could change back real quick that's all i got for you man so please remember to like subscribe and share um Check out the links below, the t-shirts, while well, you still can. <laughs> and the eBay store and all that, and I'll put that link to that other channel. We'll try to get that one fired back up and going, too. So, good Lord willing, and them creeks don't rise. We'll be back again tomorrow. See ya.